What's up? What's happening? What's poppin'? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great episode of Simone with the Spizzoids. I'm Simone, bringing you guys the daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here, you haven't already subscribed to this channel yet, stop what you're doing, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the many links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel that you love so much. And the second link is to shop the official Simone with the Spizzords, a merch collection, get you the classic tee, the wavy tee, or the brand new fly or die crew neck that I've been rocking lately. This crew neck comes in white, as you see here pictured or videoed. It comes in green and black, so make sure you shop that E for this season. But guys, turn your notification bells on because you already know the videos are coming live. Boom, 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 boom. And you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream. But guys, let's get into this topic. I've been gone so long from the studio. I really miss being in the studio. So I'm happy to be back in the stew. The stew just hit different. I don't know. Do y'all feel a difference like when I'm in the studio versus when I'm like in the car or whatever doing a video? But I feel a difference and I'm glad to be back in the stew. Um, but yeah, I've been so busy y'all. So y'all had got a lot of car videos. Um, so sorry, so sorry, so sorry. But I'm back. But y'all, y'all know who else is back? Mel Kuyper is back online with another mock draft so his second mock draft before the nfl draft at the end of april so mel kuyper jr dropped his mock draft with trades y'all but the eagles were not engaged in any trades in this version of his mock draft i know a lot of us were talking about trading back one of our first round picks for an addition for trading back for a first round pick next year so that we have two first rounders this year and two next just in case, you know, things don't work out at the quarterback position or whatever position, we'll have two first round picks um, this year and next. But in this draft, we do not make that trade. We make the three first round picks. And the first of those three at number 15 is Trent McDuffie, a cornerback out of Washington. Now, Trent McDuffie, we talked about him before. Let's get into what Mel said, then I'm gonna give y'all Moan's take. Mel's take, then Moan's take. So Moan said McDuffie didn't allow a single touchdown in coverage over the past two seasons. He could play the spot opposite of Darius Slay. He also has the ability to play out of the slot. Now we talked before, McDuffie is an undersized corner. Um, NFL, he projects in the slot and we already have Avante Maddox. We really need a lockdown corner outside corner opposite of Darius Slay. So that's Trent's biggest weakness is his size and his size on the NFL level. Also, one of his biggest weaknesses is the competition level he played at Washington. Um, some people can say the competition was a little iffy, you know, would make iffy. <laughs> How would he do against competition, um, consistent NFL level competition? He's still projected to be a number of first round pick. We'll see how he um, does, how he proves people wrong about his size and whatever at the, the NFL combine. But that's his biggest weakness is that he doesn't have a, the, the, the traditional size of an outside corner. And that's what we really need. So um, let me read his overall synopsis. Um, when you look up his, his scouting report, the first negative, his, the first weakness is below average size and length for cornerback one. So we'll see. But his, his NFL comparison is Jair Alexander. His overview, he was a three-year starter whose average size is overshadowed by his skillful ruggedness, allowing him to contest throws from a variety of coverages. He's an elite competitor with a route-hugging mentality fueled by body control, foot agility, aggression, and burst. He's a pesky press man defender with the tools to excel in zone. He's willing to fly downhill and hit anybody near the football. He keeps his eyes on the prize and has an itchy, twitchy trigger to close throwing windows and make plays on the ball. He lacks lockdown traits but has the lockdown talent and his competitive energy is contagious. I like that. He could play outside or from the slot and carries a very high floor with potential to become one of the league's top corners at some point during his first contract. Like I said, I have no doubt in my mind Trent is a great corner. The only thing, and you know, he could prove me wrong, is the size, his size as an outside corner. That's the only thing I'm worried about because he has the size of a slot corner. But Mayo has us picking Trent at number 15. Now, number 16, we get a linebacker, but no, it's not the linebacker we keep talking about. It ain't Devin Lloyd, it ain't N'Kobe Dean. This time we pick David Ajabo out of Michigan, an outside linebacker at number 16. So let's go Mayo's take and then Moan's take. So Mayo says, Ajabo is a pure pass rusher who is still developing as a run defender. I feel better about taking Ajabo in the middle of round one versus the top 10 because he can get swallowed up in the run game. 
but his red edge rush upside is undeniable. So David Ajabo is somebody who is just praised for his pass rushing and edge rushing ability. And I like that. That's something that we definitely need. We definitely need some help off the edge. Most of our sacks this season was coming from the interior with Fletch and Javon, which is great that they're dominating down there, but we definitely need that presence coming off the edge um, to really knock these quarterbacks off their game. Um, so he's a pure edge rusher. My only thing is that he, he had a, a huge weakness in the run game. My thing is you're gonna be a linebacker. Um, we need you to, we need a linebacker that can do both. Um, and Devin Lloyd and, and Nicobe Dean are all around linebackers. They can blitz and they're solid against the run game as well. I just don't know about getting a, a linebacker who is a huge liability against the run as um, David Ajabo is always described as a huge liability against the run. So I don't not like it, but I am a little like, hmm, because then we're gonna have to need to get somebody else to overcompensate for that when we could just get an all around linebacker. But this is his overview. He's an emerging edge defender who should see a substantial leap in play consistency with more time to work on his technique and learn the game. The upside is evident despite his inexperience. At times the run tape can be a rough study, but it has improved as the 2021 season progressed. Ajabo's rush approach is fairly sophisticated with the feet and agility to juke, stutter, spin, and race his way past offensive tackles. He's not ready to take on pro run blockers, but Ajabo is in the early stages of his physical and play development. It would be wise for evaluators to project and grade the flashes as high upside rush talent with 4-3 and 3-4 appeal. So like I said, liability against the run, great off the edge. He did only play two seasons of college football, so he is inexperienced. And who knows, once he gets to the NFL level training camp, boom, 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 boom it could boom and burst from there. His run um, defense can get so much better. Um, but yeah, that's his negatives and experience and um, huge liability in the run game. My overall take, um, we need an edge rusher, we do, but we could get a guy that's a defensive end um, and not get a linebacker that specializes in um, rushing. I just don't know about him just being such a huge liability in the run game. I mean, the edge rush is there, yes, and we need that, but we could get a defensive end to do that. I feel like we're getting a linebacker, we need an all-around linebacker who could do it all. Blitz, um, run, run stopper, and also can help in the um, drop back pass defense um, linebacker as well. Um, not sure if I want a linebacker that only can do one thing. I want a linebacker that can do it all. You know, if I want just an edge rusher, I'll get an edge rusher that can play defensive end as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, but let's move on to the last pick and my favorite pick out of this draft. Somebody we have not talked about before and I don't know why I should have been talking about dude. But let's talk about him now. And number 19, Traylon Burks, wide receiver out of Arkansas. This is my favorite pick. And this is a guy I'm going to be focusing on a lot because I'm just starting to really love Traylon Burks' game. So Mel says, I would get Trey Lock, I would get Jalen Hurts, a different kind of receiver in Burks, who is big, physical, six foot three, 225 pounds, and could complement Devonta Smith's speed. I'm really curious to see if his athletic testing numbers at the combine. It's not out of question that he rises even further up the boards. So this is a guy that's supposed to shoot up the boards at the combine. And let me tell you why, because Dude has the size and the speed. He has both. So his NFL comparison is AJ Brown with more wiggle. So he's big, smooth, and natural. Burks possesses the versatility to operate from wherever you want and get to wherever you need, no matter the competition. He's a mismatched receiver combining size, strength, and competitiveness, similar to AJ Brown, but appears to be faster and more athletic. So a faster, more athletic AJ Brown, oh my goodness, draft this dude. Arkansas benefited from putting the ball in his hands from a variety of alignments, and there is no reason to believe NFL play callers won't benefit from doing the same. For as talented as Burks is today, he's likely to keep getting better. He will require specific game planning for defenses operating without a true cornerback one and has the potential to star as a high volume, three level target who can start and produce in his rookie season. I'm loving Traylon Burks. Let me read some of his strengths. Smooth size when gliding through, through space. Runs routes with proper leverage and turn acceleration. Premium size and speed ratio. Huge hands. Has the size and body control to mismatch cornerbacks. Made eight catches for 179 yards and two touchdowns against Bama. That Bama defense. 
179 yards versus Bama. That Bama defense releases into routes with forward lean, and he's hard to push and threaten. He sells his body out to make the catch. He has a great stiff arm, and he can build up speed to make a short catch a long game. Y'all, I'm loving Traylon Burks. If you can't tell, I'm loving Traylon Burks. That's what we need, a big body X receiver. Big body to complement our smaller, shiftier guys. That's what we need. And this is Traylon Burks. He has a size big and speedy. I'm loving Izzy. I'm loving Izzy. I'm loving Traylon Burks. Now his weaknesses, um, average physicality after the catch for his size. He will need to work on that. Allows coverage too much leeway on 50-50 balls. Need to work on that. Um, takes time slowing and getting intermediate breaks. All stuff he can work on. And like I said, he's expected to shoot up the draft boards after the combine. But I'm loving Traylon Burks, y'all. I'm loving Traylon Burks, okay? But y'all, let me know what y'all think about these players. I hope I gave y'all enough of a take of my take. Um, let y'all, but of course, like, we'll chat in the comments. We'll chat in the comments, you know. And I'm gonna do better about responding to comments. I really haven't been responding to comments lately. You know, I'm really great at responding to comments. But y'all, when I tell you, I've been busy, busy, busy. I haven't had time to respond to you guys' comments, but I'll be responding. I'll be back. We'll chat in the comments about these guys. But let me know what y'all think about these guys. Like I said, Traylon Burks has me just straight up giddy. That's somebody I'm like, shoot, I really want Traylon Burks. Out of these guys, I really want Traylon Burks. Before, it wasn't really anybody that I was super excited about in this draft. I mean, Devin Lloyd, of course. Like last draft, you guys know I was super excited about Devonta Smith. I was super excited about Jamar Chase. Like I was super um, one of those guys. But now I'm starting to feel that way about Traylon Burks. But y'all, let me know what you think. Make sure you like this video. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Let me know what off-season content you guys want Philadelphia Eagles-wise. Um, let me know. You know, I'm trying to give the people what they want. So let me know what y'all want. Make sure you like this video. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Keep rocking with me. Check out the mini links down below. Buy me the coffee. Shop the official small with the Spizzort merch collection. Turn your notification bells on. And until I talk to you guys next time. Bye!